Um, I'll try to keep it short now to do thanks Alex for that. It's absolutely amazing how much you managed to uh, cram in this afternoon and put out a presentation. And when you first told me about that, um, the, the, the six minutes presentation as a French person, I found that very, very challenging about how you to do it. But it's been a, a good discipline, I think, for me. And the presentation today, I want to talk about culture. And it's based on a presentation that some of you have already heard, and that uh, James, who is here, has also had me to, to prepare you for. And it's uh, based on a group that uh, we uh, decided to put together to try to get uh, everybody to start thinking about uh, the use of roles across culture. I work in Westminster as a family therapist and uh, in a team that was uh, developed about 17 years ago to start uh, recruiting people from different communities to think about cross-cultural work. So we wanted to use our experience and get everybody sort of thinking about uh, this. So the first group was um, nearly a year ago and um, it really started an ongoing dialogue and I'll tell you a little bit about some of the things that, that we do, but a little bit about our starting point as well, which was a reminder that um, um, IAP is about improving access. And we wanted to think about the um, experience of adult IAP that initially um, had um, challenges in, in working with people from different <coughs> communities, which was not a surprise really when you think about a lot of the, the common themes from research about some of the disparities in mental health and also uh, some issues of, around um, evidence-based practice uh, with RCTs that often or that not, do not always include people from different uh, community groups. We talk about how to reach a community, but somebody from Hackney that in a presentation before talk about seldom heard families. I think it's a really good uh, way of thinking about that. And the recommendation from Adult IAP was to think about recording SPVT and thinking about community involvement, clinical training, and organizational change. And uh, these are the same issues that we discussed in, in our, group, our group. And we also wanted to remind people about the main, or oh, not the main, one of the reasons to do that is really about the, uh, that it's the law, that we also have to think not only about eliminating discrimination, but also about promoting equal opportunities. So that's something that we really have to, to, to take seriously. But for me, it's also about uh, relationships and thinking about building bridges between different agencies and the families that, that we work with. And we know that when we think from the, the McPherson report and uh, our experience that there is often a lot of misunderstanding, fear and suspicion. And I think the first step for us when we engage with, with families is to really to, to think about how we can start bridging these, uh, those, those barriers. And also when we think about culture that, that um, it's important to remember that we all have a culture. It's not just about people out there. It's about how we all start thinking all the time about culture. And we think about, about it as a, something that's often quite difficult to grasp. Like, well, I didn't have much of, of an idea about being French until I came to London. And, and that's when we start reflecting on some, some of the things that you do differently. And how uh, culture really constructs uh, the, the very basic notion of who we are, the relationship we build, and how we see well-being and, and, and treatment. So it's a um, similar analogy to the previous uh, presentation, really, that, that to access culture, in the end, we have to use ourselves. And it is about reflective practice, teamwork, and a lot of hard work and, and um, yeah, reflective practice. How are we doing with CYPI at the moment? I think um, from the, the, the statistics that I've seen, not very well. And the, the main thing that I think that is a concern is that uh, we're still struggling to record ethnicity. And we hope that soon there will be an expectation <coughs> that people will 
uh, pay attention to recording ethnicity so that we can start building an evidence base for the different uh, cultural groups that we, we are working with. Uh, because it's also wrong to, to build on that. The issues that the group identified, uh, as I said earlier, was about engaging with local communities, uh, really thinking about the validity of wrongs, the, the impact that uh, doing wrongs is going to have on the therapeutic relationships, and the thinking about developing clinical skills, as well as still thinking about the organizational context. And one of the, we contributed to the, the core guidelines that, 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 that I think were added, uh, um, uh, uh, revised recently. And one of the uh, recommendations that we made was for each uh, cooperative to start thinking about having a lead, a cultural lead, who is going to um, start the dialogue uh, in your local areas and take uh, the lead in thinking about demographics, thinking about engaging different community groups. Uh, so, yeah, I hope you will think about that on your long, long journey home this <laughs> evening. Uh, we also uh, started thinking about, uh, trying to uh, develop some clinical um, skills uh, that will help uh, with the use of, of probes. And these are based on some work that we did uh, at the Morgrad some years ago, led by Anne Miller, uh, to, to think about um, how to think about culture clinically. And um, so one of the first uh, things to think about is about um, uh, thinking about the uh, validity of measures, as I said before. I'm going to run through this really, really quickly, but they are in the core guidelines, so you'll be able to, to just read them, yeah? Uh, so thinking about whether the, the measures that you're going to use are going to fit with the person that you're going to see, and whether the, there might, be, in the family, there might be issues around feeling for, for example, a family that recently migrated, has been through Heathrow, having to feel a lot of forms already, might have you know, issues about uh, feeling the, the forms. <coughs> then, Thinking before the session about what to do, about um, what it is that you need to know about the, the culture, and reflecting also about your, your own culture and um, how you might need to tailor your practice to, to the family that, that you're working with. Uh, think about the, the difference between generations, that very often we will have a family where the children will uh, speak English with part of a more Western way of thinking, while the parents uh, might have a very different understanding. So helping bridge the differences between the children and, and the parents in those discussions is really important. And asking questions to the parents about how they might um, explain <coughs> the symptoms or some of the questions we're asking them in their own cultural origin would be really important. Um, then thinking about language, whether you need to uh, uh, translate the form, whether you need to have an interpreter, and how you're going to prepare the interpreter before before the session, whether you need more time to uh, add to, to do the forms. In the sessions, I mean, those things are very um, obvious, really. It's thinking about how you explore the, 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 the family's construction of the problem, uh, how you acknowledge that you might have dif different explanations and that explaining that the models that you use have been developed within a certain context that might not fit uh, the other families. Think about power issues and what we talked before about the, uh, the bridging issues of, of, of power, trust, and um, things like that. And being flexible, really knowing that uh, when you work across cultures, things might take a bit more time. You might need to take a, a, a back seat. But 
what was really important for us was not to stop doing the wrongs. That if we don't collect the data with people from different countries because it is too complicated, then we are never going to improve our practice. So we really have to do it. And if we choose not to do it in the first session, we try to do it in the sec second. And we look for cultural consultation, we look for supervision and, and support. And that's what you do ap after the session to really think carefully. To bring it all together, we've got this lovely diagram that uh, Emma Joyce uh, um, did uh, after a lot of hard work which is trying to bring it all together at those different levels. So at the centre, you've got really reflective practice, thinking about our own culture, but you also need to think about the organisational culture, thinking about the community you're serving, and a clinical practice. And for, we really want people to join us to start this thinking, because it, we're only just starting it. And the next group that we have is next Thursday, the 13th, <coughs> It's at the Marbra Family Service in uh, uh, St. John's Wood. So yeah, let us know if you're coming so that we can uh, uh, get enough you know, cups of teas and things. But you're welcome to, to join to start the, the thinking and bring ideas back into your, your collective. And in the future, it doesn't have to be at the Marbra. We can uh, you know, have it somewhere else if people are, are interested. Thank you. Thank you.